Good morning and welcome to this week. Stunner. The commander in chief decides to strike Syria. We cannot turn away from the massacre of countless civilians with chemical weapons. Then drops this surprise. I'm asking Congress to send a message to the world. Will Congress approve an attack? What if they don't? And what are the risks of delay? As the world waits, we're live with Terry Moran in the Middle East, Christian Amanpour from London, and... This is evidence. These are facts. I'll go one-on-one -on -one with the man who made America's case to the world, Secretary of State John Kerry. Plus, Martha Raddatz and our team of experts are here to break down the global and military consequences of the president's decision. And our powerhouse roundtable weighs in on the politics of war and all the fallout at home. It's all right here this Sunday morning. From ABC News, a special edition of This Week with George Stephanopoulos. Crisis in Syria starts now. Hello again. When President Obama took to the Rose Garden Saturday afternoon, his first words had been telegraphed for days. I have decided that the United States should take military action against Syrian regime targets. Then came the twist. The president's top military advisor, Joint Chiefs Chair Martin Dempsey, said there was no need to attack now. The chairman has indicated to me that our capacity to execute this mission is not time sensitive. It will be effective tomorrow or next week or one month from now. And I'm prepared to give that order. But only after Congress votes. I will seek authorization for the use of force from the American people's representatives in Congress. Over the last several days, we've heard from members of Congress who want their voices to be heard. I absolutely agree. It is a high stakes bet, and this morning we're going to examine all the consequences with Secretary of State John Kerry and our team of experts and correspondents here in the studio and around the world. We start at the White House with ABC's John Carl. And John, this didn't just surprise us. The president kept his team in the dark until late Friday. It sure did, George. This was a total reversal for the president. Until late Friday, this was an idea that wasn't even under consideration. None of his senior advisors were pushing for congressional authorization. It was not a direction they were pushing the president, but he simply decided, especially after that vote in Britain, that this was the direction he had to go. And take a look at this photo in the Situation Room before the president announced the decision on Saturday. As you can see, some very grim faces all around. There were serious concerns concerns expressed by his national security team, concerns chief among them that Congress could vote no on his request for authorization. Well, that's the big question, force. John. He would be the first president in modern times to lose a vote for a military force. Where are the votes now? Well, I talked to a senior Republican just a short while ago who tells me that if the vote were held right now in the House, he believes that the president would lose. There's a lot of work to be done. That Republican thinks ultimately the president can get authorization, but he is going to need to get a lot of Democratic votes, including a lot of Democrats who are generally uh, are reluctant to authorize the use of force. So this could be a real nail biter, especially in the House, George. Okay, John Carl, thanks very much. Let's get more on the military implications of a delay with our veteran war correspondent Martha Reddits and Martha. One person Person the president didn't consult early was General Dempsey, and he gave the president the cover he needed. He, he really gave him cover, and in fact, it's real. Martin Dempsey said it would be just as effective if you did it today, tomorrow, or a month from now. And think of it this way, George. It's kind of like a feint. The enemy, we watch the enemy, we watch the Syrian regime and how they responded to the idea of attack, where they started moving things. So in many ways, it may be more effective a month from now because we can train more, we can watch what the Syrian regime does and respond to that. But boy, they were ready. They had those destroyers in the Mediterranean ready to go. And this is still a limited strike. They still say a limited strike to prevent and deter any more chemical attacks. Okay, Martha Raddatz, and for how this is playing in Syria, let's go to ABC's chief foreign correspondent, Terry Moran. He's in Beirut this morning, and apparently a lot of relief in Damascus. A lot, George. This came as good news, even more than good news. They claimed a victory this morning in Damascus. Both the Assad regime and President Assad's supporters, of whom there are many, the deputy prime minister saying it was the Syrian army that warded off the aggression of the United States. And in fact, they believe that the unified front that they had with Iran and with Hezbollah 
has essentially frightened President Obama into backing down from his attack. Now, they also know that the Congress could authorize the use of force, but this delay gives them even more time to prepare. Church bells rang out. There were prayers sounding from minarets around Damascus. Uh, this came as a shock and a good one to the people of Damascus. Not a good shock, though, for the rebel leaders in Syria. Devastating, George. Uh, on Twitter and in public statements, leaders of that fractured opposition in Syria are expressing disappointment and disillusion with American leadership. Uh, one of the leaders of one of those factions said that the people of Syria are all alone now. Uh, they believe that the chemical weapons attack that they argue was carried out by Assad's regime has been carried out with impunity and that the world is not ready to do anything. Uh, Obama's leadership uh, image in the Syrian opposition is probably at an all-time low right now, George.